Bonjour tout le monde, bonjour à tous, good morning. I hope you're enjoying your coffee from wherever you may be. My name is François Julien, I'm the Dean of the Telford School of Management. Il me fait plaisir de vous accueillir au petit déjeuner du PDG de l'année. Mais avant d'entrer dans le vif du sujet et, pour, et comme le veut notre tradition, pour le début de chaque événement de l'université, voici l'affirmation pour rendre hommage au peuple algonquin. We pay respect to the Algonquin people who are the traditional guardians of this land. We acknowledge their long-standing relationship with this territory, which remains unceded. We pay respect to all Indigenous people in this region, from all nations across Canada who call Ottawa home. We acknowledge the traditional knowledge keepers, both young and old, and we honor their courageous leaders, past, present, and future. The Telford School of Management has been sponsoring and supporting the Ottawa Business Journal and the Ottawa Board of Trade Best Ottawa Business Awards for many years. We are very pleased with this partnership, which allows us to stay well connected with our local business community and to welcome the winner of the CEO of the Year Award as our special guest for our CEO of the Year Breakfast Speaker Series. Today, we welcome the 2019 CEO of the Year, Dan Goldberg, Chief Executive Officer of Telesat, for an interactive leadership discussion and interview. Au fil des ans, ces petits déjeuners ont fourni à nos étudiants à nos diplômés et aux membres de la communauté, un forum de discussion sur des sujets d'actualité du monde des affaires. Ils nous ont aussi permis de découvrir le parcours professionnel, les motivations et les réalisations des leaders de notre communauté qui se sont mérités le prix du PDG de l'année. Je passe maintenant la parole à notre maître de cérémonie, M. James Price, directeur général développement et engagement communautaire à l'École de gestion Telfer. James has recently joined our team and these Telfer's outreach and external relations. James, over to you. Great. Merci beaucoup, Francois. Uh, bonjour. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Um, this uh, CEO of the Year Breakfast has been happening for many years, and we've had the pleasure at the Telfer School of hosting it in partnership with the Ottawa Board of Trade, the Ottawa Business Journal, and Boyden. Um, but uh, I, I can honestly say that this is the first time where we've actually hosted a breakfast where it's become a BYOB event, which is a bring your own breakfast. Um, so thank you all for joining us. Uh, before I formally introduce you to our esteemed guests, I'd like to say a few things about this webinar. Um, please note that this webinar will be conducted in English only. Um, it will be recorded and emailed to all participants uh, in a few days shortly after. Um, we are this is a live event and therefore please use the Q&A feature to add your comments, react to other messages and to submit your questions for the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Um, I have now the honor and pleasure of introducing uh, the Ottawa Business Journal and Ottawa Board of Trade CEO of the Year, Dan Goldberg. Dan became president and CEO of Telesat in 2006 and prior to joining Telesat, he served as Chief Executive Officer of SES New Skies a position he held following the purchase of New Skies by SES. During that time, he also served as a member of the SES Executive Committee. And prior to becoming CEO, he served as Chief Operating Officer of New Skies, and prior to that as New Skies General Counsel. And uh, while Dan is American and has uh, degrees from the University of Virginia and Harvard Law School, he and his family have adopted Ottawa as their home, and we're pleased to have him here. Um, I'd also now like to introduce to you to our panel who will be leading our discussion with Dan today. Uh, firstly, my colleague at the Telfer School, uh, Catherine Elliott. Catherine is an assistant professor and is the director of the school's MBA program. Uh, so joining her will be Paul Marshall. Uh, Paul is a partner at Boyden and sponsor of the Ottawa Business Journal CEO of the Year Breakfast. And at the end of the, the panel Q&A, uh, we will also hear from Michael Curran, uh, publisher of the Ottawa Business Journal to provide some closing thoughts. So with that quick introduction, let's jump right into it and I'll now pass it over to the panel and Catherine, you're up first.
Thank you very much, James. I forgot about the mute, um, of course. And um, Dan, I want to thank you so much for joining us this morning at our annual Telford Breakfast Series that recognizes the Ottawa Business Journal CEO of the Year. Congratulations, and we are really excited to have you here virtually. And we do hope that you and your family are doing well during these challenging times. Speaking of challenging times, um, how are you doing at Telesat? How are you coping with the COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah, uh, first off, Catherine, thanks. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, indeed, it would have been nice if we were all able to have breakfast together, but um, uh, we embrace uh, technology at Telesat, so we're, uh, uh, I I'm impressed that you guys have been able to um, organize this. And, uh, and also, I do just want to say uh, uh, an acknowledgement, a thank you to the Ottawa Business Journal, uh, the Ottawa Board of Trade, and to Telfer. Uh, you guys working together uh, bring so much to the Ottawa business community, which is a great community and one that you know I feel really privileged to be a part of. So so thanks for that. Uh, yeah, uh, we're all uh, doing pretty well in this kind of work from home scenario. I've got uh, a wife and three teenagers, uh, all of whom are, are home now. I'm home now, so um, yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, a different time uh, for the business. You know, we mm -hmm. shut the office down about three months ago. We have uh, what turned out to be a really good business continuity plan. Not hugely surprising. I mean, Telesat is a you know kind of essential service provider, and um, yeah, I think we've done a really good job supporting our customers you know, sort of, you know, moving the business forward. Um, for the most part, you know, I, I, I have so many friends and whatnot who run different sorts of businesses in Ottawa and, you know, all around the world. Our, our business being a, you know, uh, communication service provider, we've held up pretty well. Uh, if there's a part of our business that's been really adversely affected by uh, COVID, it is, uh, providing broadband connectivity to airplanes, uh, which is just kind of flat on its back right now. Uh, same with providing broadband to cruise ships. Uh, that's another you know segment that is just uh, completely stopped right now. Um, but then you know we provide broadband connectivity to a lot of rural communities all over the world, including throughout Canada. That's been up. So I think net net will be a little bit down this year, but I've been amazed that we can have everybody. Uh, our headquarters is here, but we've got offices and facilities all over the world, virtually everybody working from home and uh, still able to you know, do everything that we need to do. Well, thanks, Dan. Sounds like not too bad given the circumstances, in fact, really well. Um, if you don't mind, I want to just set the stage a little bit and if you could take us back and tell us a little bit about Telesat's history and specifically the milestone that you hit in 2019. Yeah, no, I'd be pleased to. Uh, Telesat has a, a long and, and rich history. The, the milestone uh, that uh, we celebrated last year, uh, Telesat turned 50, uh, which you know, for a high tech company, uh, making it all the way to 50 uh, now more than ever uh, is an achievement sort of in its own right. Um, so Telesat was originally a crown corporation. Um, it was created by an act of the Canadian Parliament in 1969. It was at a point in time where, uh, I don't know, you know, people were enamored of all things space. I think the Apollo 11 mission had just gone up. So this is, you know, uh, people going to the moon for the first time. And, and you know, uh, uh, parliamentarians at the time were very focused on, just like parliamentarians were, you know, in the, in the prior century, connecting the country. You know, in the 1800s, it was all about the railroads. Uh, in 1969, it was about you know, stitching together uh, this vast country uh, with a, a, a communications infrastructure that could 
uh, broadcast the CBC coast to coast to coast, provide you know basic uh, telephone services uh, for the entire Canadian you know landmass, and so and so that you know was the original inspiration, um, and you know it was a home run. They hired uh, some really world class engineers. Three years later, uh, Telesat launched the first uh, domestic communication satellite in the world. Uh, and from there, sort of drawing upon, uh, you know, a depth of just really uh, a leading engineering resources, just, just sort of kept innovating, launched the first satellite used for direct-to-home satellite video, the first satellite for two-way internet services. And, you know, today, 51 years later, uh, we're one of the largest satellite operators in the world. Um, yeah, with operations, literally, we provide service in almost every country in the world. Uh, it's, yeah, it's been a good ride. That is a lot of firsts, and I feel like Canadians don't recognize the uh, the role that Telesat's played. That's something we really need to be proud of. It's um, our fault. We, I don't know. I don't know whether it's being Canadian or uh, an aerospace kind of heritage, but we. Yeah. We've tended to keep a bit of a low profile. Uh, we're needing to change that a little bit right now, but but yeah, no, we've uh, a little bit flown under the radar. So you did give us a little bit of an idea of your size, global. Um, can you give us an idea of like revenues, profitability, number of employees, for example? Yeah, yeah. So um, today uh, our equity is private, but our our debt is public. So you know we report a uh, number numbers quarterly and and the like so let's see 2019 revenues were uh in canadian dollars uh 911 million uh profitability we had about 185 187 million dollars uh, of net income in truth we uh tend to focus a little bit less on our net income number we have a significant amount of debt in US dollars. We report in Canadian dollars. Under the accounting rules, you know, at the end of every quarter, we have to translate all of our US dollar debt into Canadian dollars, and we either have a big foreign currency gain or a loss. We tend to focus, like others do in our sector, on EBITDA, so earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So there, uh, and I mean, it's it's a it's a decent proxy for cash flow. Uh, there, I think we had about seven hundred and eighty seven million dollars. So I mean, we had a eighty four percent EBITDA margin. Uh, it's the highest in the industry. I think it's a reflection of the fact that we uh, manage the company in a very uh, sort of disciplined, rigorous way. We generate a lot of cash, uh, which we need because. Uh, we have a very capital intensive business. It doesn't require uh, a huge amount of people to run a global business like this if you do it efficiently. It's very capital intensive. So our total employee base today uh, is about 450 uh, people and probably about, I don't know, two thirds of those here in Ottawa. Excellent. So um, thanks for that. I'm gonna turn it over to Paul now. He has a question for you. Yeah. Dan, congratulations on 50 years in business. We'd also, like to, we'd also like to get to know you as a person a bit better. Maybe you could walk us through uh, a little bit about your background. Where are you from? Where did you go to school? And, and maybe a bit of insight onto your into your career path. Yeah, no, I mean, um, so I grew up uh, uh, in Arlington, Virginia, so just outside of Washington, D.C., uh, in a community much like uh, the one I live in today, D.C., particularly when I was growing up, was a real government town. Uh, my dad was a lawyer uh, working across the river in, in, a, in Washington, D.C., and I grew up in Arlington. Um, and, yeah, you know, I uh, never really had any ambitions to uh, be a business person. I studied history at the University of Virginia. It's a strong history program. Uh, I took a year off and worked in Paris for a year, sort of not knowing exactly what I wanted to do. Um, I went to law school. I went to Harvard. Um, uh, here again, 
you know, a little bit maybe, you know, I don't know, I really, I really, I was very good about what I didn't want to do. I, <laughs> I didn't think I was particularly strong at math, so business, engineering didn't seem like uh, obvious paths. The law uh, seemed like, I don't know, at least law school, I, I, you know, I thought I'd enjoy. Um, but I did, I graduated from law school and I came out uh, and I practiced law for, I don't know, about 10 years. Um, and I started practicing uh, kind of regulatory telecom law um, and ultimately joined a client that was a satellite company, uh, ultimately decided that I didn't really love uh, being uh, a private attorney working at a law firm. So I went in-house, I joined uh, what was a startup at the time based in the Netherlands. This would have been 1998. Uh, and I moved with my then fiance to the Netherlands, uh, lived there for eight years, uh, got married, had three kids. Uh, it was a really exciting. So I, I should say I started there as a lawyer. Um, but then, uh, you know, even though it was far from my ambition, um, I uh, moved uh, to become the chief operating officer and then and then the CEO of that of that business. And it was, yeah, it was a really exciting time. We had the telecom bubble burst. We took the company public. We took it private with a big private equity firm, and and we took it public again, and and then and then sold it. Um, and at that point, uh, my wife and uh, three kids uh, wanted to get back to North America. Um, and at the time, Telesat was owned by uh, Bell Canada, uh, and they were looking. Uh, to sell non-core assets, including Telesat. And yeah, so I thought, okay, this is an interesting project. I told my wife, hey, you know, we'll go to Ottawa. It's not that far from, you know, where where we were planning to, to go, which was back to Washington, D.C. That was in 2006. I'm still here. Um, <laughs> and um, and it was great. Uh, you know, we came in, we did sell Telesat to, to our current shareholders. And, um, and uh, you know, we really just sort of put roots down in Ottawa. We love it here. And uh, the business did well. Uh, my wife was very happy here. The kids have grown up here. I'm proud to say that we're Canadians now, too, uh, in addition uh, to being Americans. So we're dual citizens. So, yeah, that's, you know, you know I mean, I, I for sure never thought uh, I would uh, be anything other than a lawyer. Uh, I never had an expectation to live in the in in the Netherlands for so long, or to live in Canada for so long, and to become Canadian. But you know, <laughs> life uh, life unfolds, and uh, you know, I think it's unfolded in a in a really great way. We we feel really lucky. Great, thanks, Dan. I'll turn it back over to Catherine for the next question. So, Dan. Thank you for sharing your career path. I love hearing those stories because often the students think they have a straight career path yeah. with one and it's it's often these great meandering stories where you have opportunities and it's a holistic picture too with your uh, family. So thanks for sharing that. Um, back yeah, to the business. It's just ducked in here. So it's, oh, it's, did they? it's more holistic than you might than you might <laughs> see. Um, back to the industry. So you talked about Telesat start as a crown corporation. And people hear that and they might think that, you know, you're a mature, you've got your 50th anniversary, you're in a mature industry, and that maybe change and innovation isn't top of the list. But in fact, Telesat is embracing a new technology that could radically change its service and, and, and internet connectivity. So uh, could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, listen, I mean, you know, being in a, in, in, and it's a fair characterization, I mean, Telesat, you know, as a crown corporation, probably for about, I don't know, 20 plus years. Um, but we are now in a, you know, a brutally competitive uh, global, uh, uh, you know, market. Um, and I'd say, you know, being in a mature industry, and I'd, I'd, I'd characterize the satellite industry and the aerospace industry as mature, uh, in some respects, maybe too mature. Um, it's getting disrupted in a, in a massive way. You know, I, I, I can't think of a mature industry right now that isn't just getting turned upside down by mostly, you know, a, a technology evolution. And, 
and 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 our industry is no different. Our industry, you know, grew kind of rapidly through the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and then uh, things started to really uh, melt down when the technology bubble burst. Um, but if you look at our business, you know, about half of our revenue comes from direct to home satellite services. So if you drive around Canada and you see, you know, those little satellite dishes, Bell TV or Shaw Direct, uh, if you're down in the States, it's Direct TV or the Dish Network, all of whom are, are, are customers of ours. Um, that represents about 50% of our business distributing, you know, video. And it's been a, uh, a, a, a great business. Uh, it, it was a real growth engine for a long time. It still generates half of our cash flow, um, but it's it's being massively disrupted by companies like Netflix and other over-the-top video offerings. I'd say the internet writ large uh, has been a massive disruptive force uh, for our industry, virtually every industry. And, um, and as a result, uh, our industry, uh, which, you know, we're about the fourth largest satellite operator at one point, ourselves and our three larger competitors had an 80% of the entire market. Um, and that market, you know, is sort of growing mid single digits every year for a long, long time. For the last five years, the uh, industry has kind of been shrinking sort of mid single digits and, and, and low double digits. And we need to do something if we're going to remain relevant and 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 get back on a growth trajectory. You know, the irony a little bit is the very force that's disrupting our industry, uh, which is you know kind of broadband connectivity, uh, also represents uh, the greatest growth opportunity. And so the demand for you know fast, affordable, reliable, resilient. Uh, broadband connectivity all around the world is just growing astronomically. But the reality for us is the kind of satellites that we've been um, uh, uh, using for the last 50 years now just aren't well suited uh, for providing broadband connectivity. So, uh, so we've kind of, you know, uh, reached back uh, into our deep kind of engineering heritage and for the last five or six years uh, have been hard at work developing uh, what, what, you know, is absolutely fair to say the most ambitious, innovative uh, commercial satellite communications project genuinely like in history, not, not just in Telesat's history or the history of our industry, but um, I mean, it's it, it's a massive project, and so and so what we've conceived is, uh, I mean, today we're one of the largest operators with 17 big geostationary satellites that operate 36,000 kilometers above the Earth. We're going to launch a constellation of 300 plus satellites operating at a thousand kilometers above the Earth. All the satellites will speak to each other through lasers. Um, and we will bring terabits and terabits of very affordable, high-performing uh, broadband connectivity, more broadband connectivity uh, than exists in space today. If you aggregate all of our satellites, all of our competitors, everyone, um, it's you know a multi-billion-dollar investment, uh, and it's uh, yeah, it's a really ambitious, transformative initiative that is uh, requiring us to staff up um, and uh, yeah, be very, very focused to to carry off a project like this. That is so exciting. And I'm having trouble actually visualizing and conceptualizing what you're talking about, but it sounds enormous. You know what it looks like? It looks like an atom almost where, you know, the satellites are the electrons that are spinning around uh, the core uh, we have, you know, about 100 satellites going over the poles. We've got another 200 satellites going, you know, in an equatorial orbit. And it's like a space-based IP network. Very flexible, very resilient, very fast, very powerful. Fantastic. And, and it will bridge the digital divide in Canada, uh, throughout Africa, throughout Asia, 
it, it's a global constellation. It's it's really uh, it should be a great thing for Telesat. Should be a great thing for Canada. Should be a great thing for uh, connecting uh, everyone, no matter where they are in the world. It, it should be a real democratizing, inclusive initiative. Wow. I can see uh, your uh, legal um, expression coming out and that's obviously turning it over to Paul with his next question. I can see one of your key assets is being able to get people really enthused around your vision. So over to you, Paul. Thanks, Catherine. So Dan, we'd like you to reflect on your success for a few minutes and in particular, what are the personal attributes that have enabled you to reach this level of success? Oh, well, thanks for that, Paul. I mean, I, you know, I, I appreciate the, you know, uh, I don't know, for me, the jury's still out. I'll use another legal term. We, we, we've been successful, you know, up until now, um, but, uh, you know, the story's still being being written. Yeah, in, 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 in truth, um, uh, what would I say about that? I, I, I guess I'd say in, in, in truth, um, uh, you know, the, the, the kinds of companies that I've worked at are big uh, interdisciplinary undertakings. And, you know, the, 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 the key value creators in many ways are uh, the engineering uh, people, uh, your commercial team, your corporate development people, your business people. And I'd say, you know, if, if I've been successful, if, if we've been successful to date, um, it's totally been a function of having, and this isn't some self-deprecating, you know, nonsense. I mean, it's just true. Um, having a really good team of people uh, working together um, in a good collegial constructive way uh, with shared objectives, being really clear and crisp about what those objectives are. Um, being very focused and disciplined, which means, you know, trying to get done the things that you need to get done, but also, you know, willfully choosing not to do 10 or 20 other things so that you can stay focused on, on the things you need to stay focused on. Um, but if we've been successful, it's really been that, just getting really good people uh, from all of these different disciplines, uh, focusing, you know, them on uh, the key objectives that we have. Um, certainly, you know, doesn't hurt to have some good luck. Uh, you know, we, we've had a mixed bag of luck like, like all companies, but, you know, the reality is right now, um, you know, there's a massive demand for broadband connectivity. Some years ago, there's just a massive demand for people wanting to watch high definition television. And I think we've done a good job, you know, positioning ourselves, um, to um, uh, you know, kind of ride some of those waves, and and then I'd say for me also personally, um, having the good fortune to have some really good mentors uh, and just really good constructive kind of supporters uh, along the way, um, in, including my, you know my dad who is a lawyer and was very helpful, my wife who I met in law school and has been, you know, super supportive, having really good board members and, and good shareholders. Um, and, I, and I'd also have to say, you know, I grew up, you know, not, not really in the lap of luxury, but with a whole lot more advantages than, than a lot of people um, and, 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 and really benefited from some good contacts and the like just from that. So I don't know, for me, it's been kind of a, a combination of all of those things. And I got to say, like, you know, running a business in Ottawa and, and, and in Canada, uh, great place to run a business. Uh, the government's been largely supportive of what we need to do and having a really good network of advisors, whether that's, you know, uh, accounting, uh, finance, legal, um, just all of that, just a really good ecosystem to support the business. Great. Thanks, Dan. Over to you, Catherine. So Dan, you expressed your very ambitious vision. Um, however, there's obviously some other players out there in the marketplace. In particular, there's some fierce competition from people like Elon Musk uh, from SpaceX and Jeff Bezos from Amazon. So how, what gives you your confidence that you uh, think you can compete and with these players? 
Yeah, no, listen, I got to say, I, I mentioned that, you know, we're in a brutally competitive business, which is true for, you know, the longest time, uh, you know, I used to worry a lot. Uh, I mentioned we're about the fourth largest satellite operator in the mm -hmm. world. And so, you know, for most of my career, I've worried about those three larger operators that uh, that we uh, have been competing with uh, and some new entrants that were, you know, sort of being disruptive. But yeah, you know, now, uh, and, and it's sort of a mixed blessing, you know, we put ourselves on the path of developing this low Earth orbit satellite constellation, which I, I am uh, and my colleagues are, are convinced is the right path for Telsat and, and very promising. And, and maybe it's great news that, you know, sort of world-class entrepreneurs like, you know, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos uh, have identified low Earth orbit satellite uh, constellations as, you know, a promising business opportunity. Uh, those guys are obviously massively uh, formidable uh, competitors with great track records of disrupting incumbent, you know, operators. Um, but whatever, you know, that's all right. Uh, we, we do have some real advantages. I mean, the reality is uh, we've been serving this market for 50 years. We know the customers, we know the market, we know what they want. We have a deep, deep, deep understanding of the technology, uh, what it can do, uh, what some of its limitations are. Um, whether we like it or not, our industry is heavily regulated. Um, and we have deep expertise in that area. So you have to get market access in every country in the world that you want to provide services in. You need to get rights to the radio frequencies, the spectrum you need to operate a service like this. So, you know, when I, when I look at our core competencies and what it takes to be successful with one of these initiatives, um, I, I feel really good about our prospects. I, I don't think it'll be a winner take all scenario. I think there will be winners and losers. We're pretty focused on you know being on the winning side of, of that equation. Mm -hmm. um, but there's probably room for maybe three of us. Um, and I think if we stay super focused, if we execute really well, um, I, I, I think we'll be successful drawing on those core competencies that I mentioned. So, but it's it, it's going to be a fight, um, and uh, yeah, those guys are are you know really formidable players as well. Yeah. Thanks. Well, I think Paul's got another question for you. Yes. Um, so, Dan, pardon the pun, but some have described your leadership style as as quote unquote down to earth. Uh, there are many students participating in the webinar this morning that could benefit from receiving some leadership tips from the CEO of the year. So perhaps you could talk to us a bit about your vision of leadership. Yeah, I mean, you know, I guess like everyone who has a job, you just kind of wake up and you know, you go to work every morning. You don't you don't always take that big step back and think about, you know, I don't know lofty issues like leadership. But uh, I mean, for me, I've been CEO of Telesat. I forget, I've been a CEO for 20 years now. Um, and I, I don't know what I'd say is, and what I've learned is, um, you know, I, I, I always go from the, the premise that people are smart um, and, and they know uh, if you're shooting straight with them or not. And, and if, if you're going to be a leader and and try to persuade people to work towards certain goals and 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 take hard news and hard messages uh, from time to time. Then then you've got to have a big well and reservoir of credibility. And and for me, if you assume everyone's smart, um, then you just shoot straight with everyone because because. Because, you know, at the end of the day, again, you can't really tell anybody what to do. M mostly you need to persuade them and get them to buy in, whether that's, you know, your team, employees, um, your shareholders, your customers, your regulator, you know, uh, your, your lenders, all these different constituencies that you have. And for me, I've always found that, and, 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 and credibility takes years and years to build, but you can wipe it out uh, really, really fast. And so for me, it's just being 
super straight with people, um, really honest with everybody, really transparent with everyone, um, uh, admitting when you know you, you've had a misstep, um, insisting uh, that everyone operates with you know really high levels of integrity, um, trying to have a sense of humor about stuff because at the end of the day, you know, none of this stuff is, you know, kind of life or death, really. And um, and recognizing that, you know, everyone comes from different circumstances and sometimes things are going great in people's lives and sometimes they're not. And you never really know uh, kind of where they're coming from. So I don't know. I, I've always felt that if you're straight with people, if you treat them with respect and dignity, uh, you explain yourself, even if they don't like the message always or, or, or like maybe the direction that you're taking. At the end of the day, you know, if, if you've built up good credibility, um, for me, uh, it, it all kind of works. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Dan. I think that that uh, empathy you described is really important, especially during COVID-19. And uh, I think a lot of us are having to appreciate people's per personal circumstances as well. So it's, it's nice to hear you mentioning that too. Um, so we have a lot of students and alumni who are listening in this morning, and um, I have a question for you the, directed towards them too. What career advice could you share? Um, and you said you were hiring. Second question, what's <laughs> Telesat looking for in terms of new hires? Yeah, um, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll start with the second bit. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're hiring a lot right now for this low Earth orbit satellite initiative and and you know so I, you know what we're looking for you know from you know I guess a substantive skill perspective is you know surprise surprise we're hiring you know lots of engineers still uh, we're hiring people with optical expertise and IP networking expertise and we're hiring electrical engineers and software engineers so a lot of engineers um, but we're hiring a lot of marketing people too and sort of, you know, corporate communications people, we're hiring more lawyers, uh, we're hiring lots of finance people, accounting and treasury, and, you know, really hiring just across, you know, almost all disciplines right now, tax, uh, accounting, finance, treasury, um, IT, I mean, just, just, just right across the board. Um, and I'd say what we're looking for is, um, we, we, you know, I hope all companies do, but we, we sure care a lot about our culture. And I mentioned that, you know, we're running this global business, but we don't have that many people. And, and so for us, you know, we, we try to hire people, of course, with the right substantive expertise, but then we care a whole lot about, you know, are they gonna fit in well? Uh, are they, and, and fitting in well for us means being collegial, uh, being, you know, again, acting with integrity, um, having a sense of humor, um, taking initiatives, stepping up, uh, speaking your 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 mind, but you know, what's the expression, you know, being you can you can disagree without being disagreeable. You know, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for people with expertise, but 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 people that, yeah, take initiative or constructive, um, who will be good colleagues. I, I just can't emphasize enough how how important that is. And I should say, like I think most businesses nowadays, uh, on balance, you know, we, we'd like our workforce to be a little bit more diversified too. So, yeah. you know, certainly, you know, we, we'd always love to hire more uh, women engineers in the engineering profession, as I'd say for too long, been too male. Um, and so we're always, you know, really welcoming opportunities to hire uh, you know, to diversify the workforce. Um, career advice, um, I don't know. I, my own career has just kind of been all over the map. Um, but I guess what I'd say, you know, the same advice I'd give to my uh, teenage kids, one of whom is not about to be a teenager anymore. Um, I'd say this, you know, go to places. I, I come back to this integrity thing just because I think for me, life is short. And to work in an organization that doesn't have integrity or to work with people that don't have integrity, it, it, life is just too short. And, and, and we spend too much time and too much energy working 
uh, to work with people that you don't, you know, have a high regard for. So at a minimum, you know, uh, insist that the people that you work with uh, act with integrity, act in a way that's collegial and respectful. I think, you know, working in an environment where people can joke around a little bit uh, also doesn't hurt. Um, and then what I'd say is, you know, I believe that, I, I think I really benefited from practicing law for a couple of years. And even though I didn't always love it, um, getting some really good substantive skills for me, that was writing and, you know, being a, you know, more analytical and being more structured about that. But, but if you go to some place, if you can stick it out for at least two years, if you're getting good skills, you know, I, I think it's worth it. Um, but then being really opportunistic in your career, I, I was, I mean, I thought I'd just join a law firm and stay there forever, but I, I found that um, being open-minded and, 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 and jumping uh, positions and jumping ships uh, where that made sense. And I'm always respectful when we have employees that want to make a move within the company or even going elsewhere, people need to do what's right for them. So I don't know. I mean, that's the advice that, that, that I would give. And, and God knows there are lots of great companies out there and, you know, the, the, there's the government, there are great firms. Uh, there's no reason on earth that, you know, that, that everyone can't, you know, ultimately forge a, a really good and satisfying career path for themselves. Maybe well, one more thing you. I'd say, which is yeah. um, the one other thing I'd say is, you know, step up. And, and by that, I mean, you know, I, I think I have benefited from my career in a little bit by um, not being afraid to take a decision uh, and to step up and do something that maybe I wasn't, I don't know, just kind of on the face totally qualified to do. And there are so many people out there that at the end of the day, you're just a little bit reluctant to take the decision and, and to own it. But, and, and maybe in part, cause they're, they just feel like, gee, maybe they're not qualified and there's somebody else out there that's much more expert. And, you know, what I would say is everyone is just kind of figuring it out, no matter how senior they are, no matter how experienced they are. And, and I would say, you know, um, to, to any anyone in any role, you know, don't be afraid just to state your views, put your position out there. Nobody really has the answer at the end of the day. And, and I, I just think it's important to remember that. Well, thank you very much for those uh, words of wisdom and for your humility and your honesty, um, because obviously your position, you've had many, many successes. So we really appreciate you sharing that with us. And we're also very happy to hear that Telesat is hiring, of course, at the Telfer School of Management. So we can help you with a lot of those things. Yeah, um, no. And a lot of those people. We need all the help we can get. Um, so at this ends the, the section of the, the breakfast where we're going to be having just Paul and I ask you questions. And we're going to be looking at some of the questions that have come in from our audience. So uh, we have a number of these. I'm, I'm going to pull one of them to start things off and then I'll uh, get Paul to, to choose one as well. So the first one we have here is from Osama and Osama wants to know if you can please shed some light on Telesat's corporate social responsibility initiatives and what is the company doing to give back to the community? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and you know, it's an area, I mean, in, in all candor, uh, we, we can always do more on. I mean, so, I mean, today what we do, so here in Ottawa, uh, and our headquarters is here in Ottawa, uh, we're very, very active with the uh, Ottawa Hospital. So, you know, for us, we're, we, we try to find um, causes in the community that um, uh, are uh, beneficial uh, for uh, our workforce, uh, beneficial for uh, their families, beneficial for the community writ large, and 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 so I'd say there are two causes that that we've singled out over over the years. One is the United Way, uh, and and for years we we're extraordinarily involved in the United Way. And I'd say in the last probably five plus years, we we've placed an even greater emphasis 
uh, on the work that the Ottawa Hospital is doing. I mean, at, at one point or another, the work that the hospital does and the care that they give affects just everyone in the community and, and maybe now more than ever. Um, so I'd say, you know, that's, that's an area um, in, in our day-to-day -day business, um, providing uh, broadband connectivity to um, uh, and, and, and connectivity sort of writ large to uh, communities that need it. Some of that candidly is just part of our business and it's, it's how we earn our money and keep the lights on. It's often the case that we just give away our services. So, you know, when there's a tsunami, when there's an earthquake, when the terrestrial uh, communications infrastructure just gets devastated, we tend to show up alongside of others in our industry and just make our capacity available to help uh, communities and first responders and whatnot get through those crises. So, so that's some of the things we're doing. I think we're 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 trying to be more self-conscious and do a better job on is some of the things that I mentioned earlier. Some of you know just kind of diversity throughout the workforce. Um, and, and, and trying to be more self-conscious about that when we're when we're hiring and and just taking into greater account um, uh, uh, trying to achieve a, a workforce that's more diverse and just making sure that the opportunities that we're making available are are just sort of balanced across ethnic groups and gender and and, and the like. Okay. Thanks for that. I was going to ask you about diversity, so you've already answered that one on my part. <laughs> um, OK, so over to Paul, you want to pick one of yeah. the questions here that we yeah. have? Thanks, Catherine. So um, the second question is from Jermaine, who discovered Telesat a few years ago. One of his when one of his students uh, who is a Telesat employee introduced him to the organization. I think he was a bit surprised that Ottawa had such a, uh, a leader in the satellite space um, just down the steps from Ottawa U. His question is, um, what steps are you taking to increase Telus Telesat's visibility in Ottawa and Canada, specifically to your clients and users, i.e. the general population? Well, that's a great question. And, and candidly, we've been, you know, uh, remiss there. We, we spend so much of our time, you know, engineering new solutions and trying to innovate that we haven't spent nearly enough time um, yeah, kind of promoting and marketing our capabilities. The reality is the the the, the market that we serve is is quite a discreet. You know, we're we're a B two B provider, right? So we're not providing services, you know, out there to consumers. So you're never going to see Telesat, you know, kind of advertising on television or you know popping up on you know some Google search. Uh, really, we 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 serve a very discreet market, and I. I mentioned, you know, we have 84% EBITDA margin. We're very focused on, on, you know, managing our marketing spend in a way that, that we get the best return on. Um, and I mentioned that today our, our equity is, is, is private, so we don't really even need to be out there kind of promoting the company uh, to be more attractive to, to kind of shareholders. You know, that said, um, that's changing uh, for us. Um, with this low Earth orbit satellite constellation, we're raising billions of dollars of financing. So we're going to need to be out there more raising money. Um, on the one hand, we're going to be continuing to serve the same old customer base. But with this new satellite constellation, we're expanding our addressable market. And so what are we doing? Um, we're going to be you know, launching a brand new website. We're now spending a whole lot more in marketing dollars than we ever have before. We stole the head of marketing from one of our larger competitors about six months ago, and she's leading the charge on, right now it's kind of all in the background. Um, we're, we haven't announced uh, who our vendor is gonna be to build this satellite constellation. Once that happens, we're gonna be ramping up our activities. We're gonna be doing a lot more a lot more. We have a lot of room to improve, but on the digital side, in terms of, you know, just getting out there in a much more uh, focused way uh, on all the different digital platforms. I myself am like, you know, completely invisible. I, I, I don't tweet. I'm not really participating in LinkedIn. You know, 
prepare yourselves. Uh, I'm going to need to. I'm going to need to be out there doing more of that. Um, so anyway, I mean, we have we have a, a ton of work to do there, but um, it's a great question because it's a timely question. Right now, we're spending a whole lot more than we ever have before, and you're going to see our margins are going to probably start to come down as we ramp up our hiring, ramp up our marketing uh, in advance of this big initiative. Um, but but those are the kinds of things that we're doing. Great. Thank you, Dan. Catherine, I think we probably have time for one more question. Well, this one is super quick, and I don't even know if Dan's going to answer it. It comes from Chris, <laughs> who wants to know, when do you anticipate that Telesat will announce who their satellite manufacturer partner will be? Because I heard you say you're going to announce it. Yeah, you know, it's, it's taken us a little bit longer than we would have liked. Um, and COVID, you know, for the most part, we've been able to work right through COVID, supporting all of our existing customers. I think COVID is slowing down a little bit uh, some of the activities that we're doing um, in support of, of, of choosing our vendor. We've said that we want to announce by the end of the summer, uh, and we're still, we're still trying to stick to that. It could slip a little bit, but that's still our objective. Okay, we, you yeah, pretty and, much answered it. Yeah, Good. Say, we need to get going. SpaceX is moving very, very quickly. We, we, we need to get going there. Thank you. Well, we are we are right on time at 9.50. And unfortunately, that's all the time we have for questions this morning. But uh, Dan, we want to thank you for joining us this morning and be so, being so generous with your time and, and your thoughts. We'll now pass it off to our partner, Michael Curran from the uh, Ottawa Business Journal to say a few Yeah, partners. guys, and if you would just let me say, Catherine, Paul, uh, Telfer, uh, OBJ, and the uh, Ottawa Board of Trade, thank you very much for the opportunity uh, to, to, to speak with everyone today. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. Good, uh, good morning, everyone. It's uh, Michael Curran from the Ottawa Business Journal. Uh, very happy to be with you. In fact, this is a breakfast that I've attended uh, for many years, more, more than I can count, in fact. Um, there are a few things I like about this breakfast. First off, it's a it's a great chance for the Telfer community to hear from our CEO of the year, and I think that's a, a really special thing. Second, it's a it's a nice chance for me to connect to the uh, people at Telfer, and that's a, an important thing for me to do. And third, uh, I get to eat eggs and bacon, and uh, I'm still waiting for those to be delivered to my house, but uh, hopefully sometime soon. Uh, so let me start by thanking Dan. Uh, listen, Dan, every time I hear you speak uh, or get to meet with you and reinforces you as a fantastic uh, selection as our CEO of the year. Um, uh, by the way, for the audience, Dan's selection of CEO actually uh, strikes two milestones. It was the 50th anniversary of Telesat, as we heard earlier today. It's also the 20th uh, anniversary of the CEO of the Year Award, meaning, of course, that Dan was a 20th uh, recipient of the award. And many of Ottawa's uh, uh, great CEOs have been uh, past recipients. So that's great. Dan, Dan, I think you are an exceptional CEO from uh, many different perspectives, as we've heard today, your leadership, your vision, your commitment to the community, specifically the Ottawa Hospital Foundation. And I also wanted to point out your modesty. Uh, Dan, you might not have been born a Canadian, but you sure seem like one to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. Th thanks, Mike. I, I really it, is, it is absolutely a compliment, Dan. And uh, of course, you're, you're leading an iconic Canadian company. Um, and uh, we heard a little bit about the remarkable technology that you're working on today. Uh, low Earth, uh, low Earth orbit satellites, and I think at a time like this, when many of us are working from home and suffering with connectivity uh, issues, particularly those people in rural and remote communities, we see the absolute need for Telesat and Leo to become uh, a realization, not just a just a vision. Um, so, as I wrap up here, I want to also thank Boyden Executive Search. It always sounds uh, a little trite, but uh, awards programs need sponsors, and uh, Boyden has been a great sponsor and a really natural sponsor. Of course, Boyden is a leader in this city and uh, many other Canadian cities in executive search. And uh, also, of course, Telfer uh, School of Management. Telfer has been a really important partner of the OBJ and the Board of Trade for many, many years. 
Uh, I just finished chairing the 40 under 40 selection uh, committee for 2020, and I can uh, gladly state that uh, Telfer has many, uh, many recipients on, uh, on this year's list. Uh, so that's a, a recognition of the great job that Dean Julien and uh, the many other professors and administrators doing over there. And uh, as I wrap up, I just wanted to give uh, a quick heads up on another Telfer-related event, or at least an event that Telfer is working with us on. Um, uh, I mentioned 40 Under 40 a few minutes ago. Um, we would normally be at this time of year, uh, in fact, tomorrow, I think, was the actual scheduled date, having a uh, very posh gala at the Hilton Lac Lini. That would be the normal course of action, but that can happen this year. So we've done a giant pivot, as many companies are doing uh, these days, and we're going to have an online and TV broadcast to recognize uh, the uh, 2020 40 under 40 recipients. And we've even uh, broadened uh, the mandate of that broadcast. It's called Ottawa Stronger Together, and it'll be uh, a fully produced 60-minute uh, show on YouTube and Rogers Community 22, if you're a Rogers Cable uh, subscriber. So we'll uh, present the 20 under, uh, the 40, 40 under 40 2020. You'll hear from many local business leaders, uh, a few celebrity messages, in fact, uh, on the show, some business profiles, and we have uh, a surprise musical act of local CEOs. And in fact, there's a Boyden connection, Paul. So uh, you might know what that is. So again, you can visit ottawastrongertogether.ca. The show is Thursday, June 25th at 8 p.m., so mark your schedule. And a last thought uh, for all of you students and alumni, please stay connected with local business news uh, by visiting obj.ca on a regular basis. Thanks to everyone for making today happen. Great, well, thank you. Thank you very much, Michael, um, uh, for that wrap up and um, for sharing with us some, some more exciting events happening in the city. Um, it's been a really good morning. Uh, what a great discussion. Um, thank you everyone for participating today. Um, and especially you, Dan, thank you very much. Um, and congratulations on CEO of the year. Um, I think um, listening to you and seeing what Telesat has accomplished as well as some of the other global players in the city is really kind of changing uh, what I think, uh, uh, what people in Ottawa and graduates of the University of Ottawa and the Telfer School of Management think is possible in terms of becoming a globally competitive company. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, our audience for coming today uh, to a breakfast, uh, CEO of the Year breakfast, where there was at, indeed no breakfast, but I, I do hope you enjoyed your coffee at home or in your office. Uh, I'd like to also thank Catherine and Paul for uh, moderating a, a very good uh, uh, question and answer period. Um, Please, um, this we, the Telfer School of Management has been doing a number of seminars, uh, webinars over the over the last few weeks. Um, so please keep an, an eye out for the post event survey. Um, you'll re, you'll be, re, be receiving that later today. It's important for us to improve on what we do and to identify new content that we can bring to you. Uh, just a reminder that this re recording and presentation will be um, coming in the following days. And just a reminder that. Uh, Please, uh, if you're interested, tune in for some of our next uh, webinars. Um, the next one being the future of IT strategy, which is happening next week on June 22nd uh, at 1 p.m. And we will include a link uh, to register in our post event email to you. Um, so finally, I just wanted to say uh, thank you on behalf of the Telfer School of Management. Um, and thank you all for joining us uh, this morning. And uh, we certainly wish you all a very uh, happy and a very great day. Thank you so much.